Hello, everyone, and welcome to Zombie Horse. And tonight, I'm going to be... Well, actually, it could be in a daytime for you, but shut the hell up. Tonight, I'm going to be reading a crappy pasta. It's kind of like a creepy pasta, but it's an absolute fail at being a creepy pasta. So it ends up being a crappy pasta. And I'm going to read one called Bloodthirsty. So let's go! Well, everything started when I first was heading to my girlfriend's house, and that day she was supposed to be going to the doctor's, and I had spent the whole day with her, and when she had left to go to the doctor's, I was watching her house, and the whole day I spent with her, things started to happen. Whoa. When I was with her, she seemed to be ignoring me, and I had removed her headphones, and she had started crying bad, and I didn't know why, but someone had accused me of strangling her, <gasps> but I'm not sure if it was true, or if I had blacked out or what, and then I started yelling at those people, and I think I might have lost consciousness again, and I was comforting my girlfriend when I seemingly woke up, and she was still crying, and for some reason, my shirt was missing when I woke up, and I was sad at the fact that she was crying, and I was said to be choking her, <gasps> and I was so cold, so I had found my jacket, and I decided I was going to hang out at my nearby school, and I crossed by these teens, and I just realized they had knives. Not knives, knives. And I had also realized there was a pocket knife in my jacket pocket, <gasps> and I looked at it, and I blacked out and seen that the kids no longer had arms. Oh, God. And I assumed that I had removed them with the knife. That would be kind of hard to do uh and i had ran away to say nothing to anyone and they never found out and then my girlfriend finally came back from the doctors and she asked what i had been doing and i said i i can't remember <gasps> and she says why and i say i think i might have an issue and then she wanted me to check the door because someone had been banging at the door and it turned out to be the teen's friends and they tried to stab me in the side until i had knocked one of them out and grabbed the other teen's hand before he could try and stab me then i take the knife and stab one in the shoulder to keep him down while i try to focus on the other two that had came this is turned into assassin's creed pretty fast one had been knocked out, the other had been stabbed in the shoulder, which leaves me with one more, and he had a pellet rifle and had shot me in the mouth and had busted my gums, and I started to bleed from my mouth, and he had started to laugh, and I asked, what is so funny? And he said, you're weak. <laughs> And I said, oh, really? And jumped onto him and pulled the pellet rifle out of his hands and slammed him in the face with the butt of the gun. And I feel a stinging pain in my backs, both backs. Blood drips and I look behind me and find one of the three teenagers with the knife. And I hit him with the butt of the rifle. And then I took the knife and stabbed him in the heart. And I said, does blood taste good? And he died. And then the kid with the knife in the shoulder had just gotten back up and had suffered from the fall and tried to hit me. And I had gotten away fast enough and kicked him in the jaw twice and dislocated it. Only dislocated it. Then kicked inside his mouth somehow fit my foot inside his mouth and ripped all the skin that was around the mouth apart, all that skin that's around the mouth, then stabbed his throat, which killed him. The last teen had jumped on top of me and pulled out a combat knife and stabbed my left leg and practically immobilized me and made me have a bad limp, which would, yeah, that would, and I still got back up. Whoa, you, you, you are a hero. And reached for the pellet rifle, and he had stabbed me again as I was reaching for it. And by that time, I had already suffered from three wounds, and I was bleeding bad. But I had crawled to the rifle, and the teen got close, and my girlfriend came out, and I had almost stabbed her, thinking <laughs> she was one of the teens, and she was going to try to take me inside to help me with the wounds until I had attempted to yell, Go inside! But my voice sounded like I was trying to say it underwater.
water and she couldn't understand me. And I ran as fast as I could to get her inside and made her go as she was horrified at the sight. And then I got the pellet rifle. What is up with a pellet rifle? And hit the teen in the head with it. The teen. And pulled the pocket knife out and stabbed the teen. Sounds like a porno. The teen. You keep saying the teen. In his right leg. And pulled the knife down and he screamed. Then he got back up and grabbed me by my throat and said, I'm going to kill you. And I spat blood on his face. And he tried to wipe it off. And took his hand off my throat. And I kicked him in the wound and he fell to the ground and I stabbed him in the chest with a knife and he died. Then I realized that there was someone watching me and that was the only witness, my girlfriend. She hasn't spoke to anyone, I believe. But something snapped that day and now she and I act different. I wonder why. Why that kind of event would change you. That was a month ago. And the day after the incident, I was taken to the doctors to check to see if my injuries were infected and any broken bones, but I only had a few cuts that needed to be stitched up. And when that was done, I went home. A, f a few cuts? Didn't you get, like, stabbed in the face and, and crap? Uh Two weeks ago, I got in another killing. Another killing. I got into the killing because I found a rich neighborhood that me and my girlfriend moved into a three weeks ago. And these people that had been walking around my block said that I look pretty tough and had tried to fight me. And obviously they had knives, not knives, knives on them. And one of them had tried to stab me. And I grabbed his hand and broke his wrist. Ooh. And then he feel, and then the other had ran into my gut and slammed through my house door and we fell into the hallway. Next to the hallway was our laundry room, which had as a normal laundry room would have, was a laundry stuff and bleach. And it fell and spilled on both our heads. And while we tried to see, I pulled out my knife and stabbed him in his forearm. And he finally could see and tried to find something hard. And I pulled the knife from his arm and stabbed him some more. And then put it in his eye and left him there. <sighs> then the other two came. And one had already broken wrist. So he couldn't really do much with just a left hand. So I found a wooden pole and hit him. Just a wooden pole and hit him in the head with it and stabbed him in the gut. All that's left is a guy who looks like he works out ever two hours for an hour and has a crowbar, so I run up to him and he hits me in the head with a bottle of beer because he had a crowbar and a bottle of beer, and it was a full bottle too. <laughs> Ouch. So then I throw a combat knife at him. What? And I missed, and I find a long metal rod, and I notice the tip is flat. Ah, oh, darn! And I stab him with it, and he bleeds and pulls it out and places it on the ground. Just places it. He didn't, like, throw it. He just kind of placed it gently. I think people were probably sleeping. And he starts laughing, and I say, What is so damn funny? And he said, You're covered in alcohol. And he lights a match and throws it at me, and I light on fire. Beer? 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 Beard? And I picked the rod up and threw it at him and thankfully hit him right in the throat. And I dropped to the ground and my girlfriend just got out of the shower and quickly doused the fire and took me to the hospital. Because she came out of the shower with a bucket of water. Because she normally always carries the water with her from the shower. And she asked if I would be alright when we got there. And they said, we can't tell right away. But he looks like he has some severe burns all across his body and his hair might be a permanent color of black. <laughs> and they had to bandage my face up because of the bleach and the burns. And so I sat there for a week as I had to get better. A week has gone by and the doctor took off the bandages and when she did, my girlfriend looked shocked and when I spoke, I sounded different and what I had said is, what's wrong with my face? Is there something different about it? And what that, and what that, and what the had noticed was that my face was pure ghost white and my skin had melted over my nose. There was no longer a nose. I was no longer me. So I went back home with my girlfriend after getting all the stuff that I had worn when I went to the hospital and when I got home everything was fixed like it never happened all went well. 
I woke up at three in the morning when I first saw my face when I went into the bathroom and I nearly died by surprise when I noticed I was like a ghost and so I laughed and was so happy I couldn't stop smiling at my new face. It started to hurt so I decided to cut a smile in my face and it looks great but I don't want to stop looking at it so I burned of my eyelids and my girlfriend woke up because of my laughing and she said, baby, what are you doing? And walked up to me and I smiled and she said, please don't hurt yourself and went back to sleep. I kill now, but not my girlfriend. Go to sleep. Oh my God. Oh my God. So this is the history of Jeff the Killer. If you, if you weren't on, that's what Jeff the Killer did before he, uh, <sighs> holy shit. Well, this was just terrible, but I think I'm going to do this again because wow, I mean, it makes me feel so much better about myself. So if your brain was absolutely blown into like probably a million different chunks, why don't you thumbs up this video? And if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel. You're not going to regret it. Go to sleep. Go to sleep.